Hi friends, welcome to Wonderful Word Wednesday. I'm Barb Nemechek. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Nemechek. And I see we're surrounded by angels today, so I'm assuming that's our topic. Yes. The message for this week is about the three episodes of angel appearances in the Christmas story. Hey, what do you think of when you think of an angel? Uh, usually a white robe and white wings. Mm -hmm. Most people think of them in that way. Some other people think of them with halos or holding a harp or a trumpet. People expect them to be beautiful, sweet beings. And a lot of times, we kind of picture them as feminine or girly. That's kind of odd, actually, if you think about it. Uh, speaking of feminine, sweet beings, <laughs> when most of the time, if an angel appears in the Bible, the first thing that the angel will say to that person is, fear not. Think about that for a second. I mean, if the angel had to tell the person not to fear, maybe the angel was a little scary looking. Angels probably appeared quite different from what we would expect. In the Bible, we do have a few descriptions of the way they might have looked. And they do involve wings, but also other interesting things like a bunch of eyes or blazing swords. It's also interesting to note that angels are referred to roughly 300 times between Genesis and Revelation in various ways. And it only refers to a couple of angels directly by name, Michael and Gabriel. And if you notice, both of those happen to be male. Mm -hmm. God's angels all have important jobs or purposes to do. For example, Michael is an archangel known as a warrior to fight evil forces. While Gabriel is the angel that God sends with his messages. Whenever God sends Gabriel with a message, there's often some very incredible things with it. Mm -hmm. There are several times that we see angels show up in the story of Christ's birth. In every episode, the angels had important things to tell people which wound up changing their lives. Let's start then with Mary being visited by an angel in Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 29, where it says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Take note of Mary's reaction. Even after the angel promised that the Lord was with her, she was greatly troubled, wondering what was going on. It makes sense, actually. After all, do, do you like surprises? Do you like surprises? And how do you feel if someone catches you off guard? Fortunately, the angel gave her reassurance in Luke chapter 1, verses 30 and 33. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. That's quite a promise. Now, Gabriel told Mary that her son would be a king, the Son of the Most High God. He would reign not just for a lifetime, but forever. Mary believed what was told to her, and she rejoiced because of it. It might seem strange to think of suddenly being told such a thing, but God had picked and planned out Mary from the start and knew she would be his servant. Gabriel's visit was certainly unexpected and completely changed what Mary thought her life plans were. 
and she trusted God and believed what the angel promised. It was not easy, but she was blessed to be the mother of the Messiah. In Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25, an angel went to Joseph and told him in a dream what was going to happen. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And Joseph believed what he had heard. This changed Joseph's plan for how his life was going to look going forward. But it also allowed him to be part of God's plan. Just like Joseph, our lives don't usually follow the ideas and expectations we might have. This is a good thing, because God's design is much better than ours. We don't under always understand what he's doing, and we probably won't get to experience special, special angel messengers, but we can trust in him. The unexpected or the uncertain can, can feel frightening to us, but God is with us. Not only does he have amazing plans, but God stays with us through all his work. He will never leave us. And we know that he has great things in mind for our lives when we stay close to him. Just like angels might not look or act like we have in our minds, our stories might not be as simple as we expect, but that's part of the adventure. When we encounter God, our lives change for the better and wonderful things lie ahead. There is one more angel episode that is found in Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 14, describing the angels who came to the shepherds during the night of Christ's birth. It says, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But Gabriel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And Gabriel continued, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign unto you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel Gabriel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. The angels were sent to tell the shepherds that Jesus was born. They gave this message to smelly, unpopular sheep herders. The shepherds of the time were not considered too important, but they were among some of the first to hear about the birth of the Messiah. They were scared at first, but the angels assured them of great things to look for. In the three times we saw the angels show up in the story of Christ's birth, the angels had important things to tell people, which wound up changing their lives. This is a great reminder of how much Jesus can change our lives when we let him in. Hmm. Even though there was no room at the inn, is there room in your heart for Jesus? When you make time for him, your life will change. In closing, let's remember how the angels and the shepherds shared the good news and we too can tell others about Jesus. That is our call to action for this week. Ask someone to join you at church for Christmas or share your online church services with friends and family via Facebook. Let us now end in prayer, thanking God for his angel messengers and for his unexpected and marvelous plans. Dear God, Thank you for sending us your angels and sending your son, Jesus. Thank you for being with us always 
and having a plan for our lives. Help us to trust in you like Mary and Joseph did, even when we aren't sure what comes next. Guide us in inviting others to hear the birth story. You may add your personal intentions at this moment. Amen. Amen. All right, as we want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas, we also want to remind you about your blessing jar. It's a great thing to open on Christmas. If you've done our challenge from the past, you can really, really be thankful for all the wonderful things that God has given all of us this Christmas. And listen to the little nudge that maybe God has placed in your heart this week. Really listen, because he's telling you to invite someone to church. God always has a message. We just have to tune in. <laughs> um, everyone enjoy, have a blessed Merry Christmas, and we'll catch you next week. Yep, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.